What impact do you think the female gaze has in terms of progressing feminism? Okay, so the female gaze is an interesting phrase. A uh, lot's been done about the male gaze. I've not really seen or heard much talked about the female gaze. And for me, it comes to like two different things. And one is the world of gossip magazines or, or wim women's magazines. Seems to be very much about women looking at women. But my experience of, of, of it, that I found a positive thing was in the burlesque scene. And I met a, a dancer who was um, teaching women in Manchester. Um, I made a video, a promo video, video for her. I was doing some freelance work at the time. And the first thing she said to me is, I have a lot of women who come to me uh, with body issues, who have got very low self-esteem, and they're, they're not doing it to be sexy for a bloke. They're doing it because they want to learn how to like their own body. Maybe love is even too, too big an ask, but certainly like their own bodies. So she said, I only do eight classes. There's a basic set of like 20 moves, and then you take a name and a persona, and then off you go and do your thing. But in the class, there's no mirrors, and the whole aim of the class was not to perform out for anybody else's gaze. It was to get into yourself and into your body outwards. So at that time, this was like 2007, I went to a few burlesque nights. It was 95% women, and it was women performing to women, and it wasn't a gay scene. And there were a few blokes there who were like boyfriends and people like me were just working there or whatever. I thought that was really, really interesting that to me that felt empowering. That felt like women doing something with their bodies with other women that was just like, it was, it is all kind of like, woo, look at me. But it wasn't like, look at me, aren't I perfect? It was like, look at me, I've managed to come to terms with my own body. I thought that was really amazing. and. A bit punk rock as well, I kind of like that. Go to eight classes, choose a name, find a persona, off you go. I really like that. It's very kind of unprecious and a lot of humour in it as well, which, I mean, we are ridiculous. We are ridiculous about our bodies and sexuality in our society. You know, it's quite good to have a sense of humour about it, really. Um, based on that, do you think you could say that what... Kim Kardashian did was similar or? Now Kim Kardashian doesn't strike me as a woman who is a strong independent woman forging her own career. She strikes me as a woman who's savvy enough to get good advice and understand who is a useful connection to her and fair play to her. I mean look where she is in life. A lot of people would like to be in her position. Um, you know she's got a dude of a husband, you know, make a rich husband and a, a career and her own TV show and lots of money and she's having kids and people think she's pretty and, you know, that seems to be a lot of the package that people aspire to. So she's successful in being marketed as a, as a thing. But, I mean, to me, she's, uh, she's another it girl. She's famous for being famous kind of thing. So I don't think she's got anything to do with empowerment or, f or feminism at all, no. Um, in terms of the success that she's received, what do you think it says about us that she's so... Is it even her success that why can a, her bum, one woman and her bum, dominate our entire at attention for almost a week? It was like, for the mm. week, that was the one thing people were talking about. Why do you think that is? It's not... No one else. There's so many famous people and no one else. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of women in a similar position could do the same thing, couldn't they? I mean, who could that be? You know, if Jennifer Aniston did the same thing, I'm sure it would be a similar effect. Or, I don't know, Jennifer Lawrence or any of those sort of women who are in high media profile could just go, oh, right, I'm going to break the internet by taking all my clothes off and doing a photo shoot. I mean, I don't really think that's that hard. Mm. So 
you know, what it shows is that she, she's got people working for her who understand hype very well, they understand PR and marketing very well. I mean, it's a very bold claim to say you can break the internet for somebody who's like, who even are you? What have you actually done? So, something about that situation for me says that people understand gossip and hype. It's the Katie Price Jordan school of uh, making yourself famous. Any publicity is good publicity. So whether somebody's criticising you or bigging you up makes no difference. It's all it's more copy, it's more profile. So, you know, when you get reality TV shows, the Kardashians TV show, about somebody who hasn't done anything and her family, I, don't, I just think it's crazy. I mean, people are just nosy. And some people find it very flattering that, well, I think actually most people secretly find it quite flattering that people are interested in them. Some people just milk it more than others. <laughs> I mean, what does it say about us that her, her bum can de dominate the media for a week like that? I mean, it wasn't just as simple as her bum, it was like the photographer that did that worked, used to work with Grace Jones he, he's got a very I mean the, the champagne glass shot is a very iconic image that's been used before you know there's whole issues around the fetishisation of ethnicity in there as well and there's, there's a lot in there maybe that's a sign of good media is that you can take it on so many different levels that, you know, we're still sat here talking about it several months later for a dissertation. Probably some people have got it on their walls. Uh, you know, she's just done a second, she's just done another one. I mean, this last week, she's decided she's having another baby, so she's done another nude photo shoot. I mean... It's easy, isn't it? It, it works, and it's easy, so... Fair play to her for, for doing it. I hope it brings her happiness. It, it doesn't have anything to do with empowerment or feminism, though. Um, why do you think it is that people so readily criticise magazines or people like Kim Kardashian, yet we continue to give them the attention that keeps them going? Well, my experience, I've got a very simple answer to this. My experience is people are only critical when they don't feel good about themselves. And that, that basic premise cuts through all of reality TV, all of the gossip mags, a lot of the women's magazines where everybody's picking each other to bits. It, it's, um, it's always easier to destroy something or criticise it than it is to do something better. Anybody can criticise anything, it's easy. Doing something better, that's really difficult. So... And also, you know, this is possibly too deep an answer, but I think community is very important. I think people talking to each other is very important. And I think we need stuff to talk to each other about. And that's just one of those, oh, have you seen her, blah, 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 kind of things, isn't it? Mm. People talk about it. We're talking about it. So it obviously works. <laughs> um, why do you think a whole industry can be based on women picking apart each other's bodies and failures? Well... Sort of similar to that, what I just said. Well, not really, but the answer I mean, look, we, 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 we live in... I don't know whether this is a new thing or not. Maybe if we'd have had media, similar media, hundreds of years ago, maybe it'd have been the same. I don't really know. I don't know whether female consciousness has changed as a result of media but what I think media does is it amplifies everything, it turns everything up so it just turns up the volume on that um, potentially dare I say slightly obsessive strand that has been said by some people not me to run through female 
species. <laughs> I couldn't get myself into so much trouble here, can I? You know, it's like, I mean, this is classic cliche thing. It's like most blokes that I know, if they're getting ready to go out, they'll be done in 10 minutes. It's like, well, it's a choice of shirt, done. Bit of a shave, done. You know, most women that I know can have an extremely long conversation about what's going to happen to go out, which completely bemuses me. So, what I see is there's something, there's a, you know, you can call it a, an interest or you can call it an obsession or, you know, how you kind of categorise it. I guess um, changes the charge of it, doesn't it? I think it's very sad that, you know, we live in a time where women seem to really pick at each other about everything all the time. I think that's really sad. So, I don't... I mean, I guess you could say on some level what Kim Kardashian's done is an answer to that on her own level. I mean, it is what she says in her PR speak is, you know, I've had a baby, I got ripped to shreds in the press, I've got my body back to how I feel okay about it, here it is. And, you know, she's she's got a big bum, so she's not conventional shape in some ways. Maybe that is all right. But I think in her position, it, it's so difficult in her position to not undermine her own statement because she's a very rich reality TV, pop stars, missus kind of position. If, you know, you couldn't do that, because you haven't got the platform to do it. If you did it, then it would be a more powerful statement, but who's going to see it? So it's tricky, isn't it? You know, people have to sort of trade on their currency and in a way undermine, you know, it's like Russell Brand trades on his currency of being, you know, an ex-junkie, ex-sex addict. Now he's kind of... He's got a lot to say about the world, but he's still, his job title is comedian. You know, his job title is trying to be funny. So he undermines himself in a way by his own persona and profile. I think it's impossible to be in the media without create, having this sort of thing created around you, of you, that isn't real, it isn't a real thing. It's all amplified and magnified and distorted. Um, if Kim Kardashian's bum is the answer, what is the question? Mm -hmm. If Kim Kardashian's bum is the answer, what is the question? I guess the question for me is, why can't we just get over ourselves? I mean, seriously. I think British and American media are very, very different. To, if you look at... If you look at um, the cover of um, Cosmopolitan or Vogue or some of those magazines that are um, have European editions, the the way that female bodies are treated in Europe and especially in Scandinavia is just really different. I mean, we just we have that just ridiculous obsession with nipples in our society that is like the force of life in the universe that we, we've created some kind of really weird shame about. I mean, it's so awful. Women f scared about breastfeeding their children. I mean, what, what's wrong with us? That, that, that's really frustrating. It frustrates me all that. You know, there's a, there's a line around appropriateness that always needs kind of negotiating, but it's that thing about sexuality again, you know, breastfeeding your child is not a sexual thing, a nipple is not a sexual thing, it can be, but it's all about context. Kim Kardashian's bum. I mean, it's like you said before, it's just like that, whoa, look at me, here I am, because she can. Fair play to her, but the question is, why, why is that important and why... Why are we so obsessed with bodies? Why are we not obsessed with our relationship with God or spirit? I mean, that was an obsession for centuries. The church, the afterlife, relationship with God. 
that strikes me, although it didn't go down too well in some ways, in my personal opinion, it strikes me as a better obsession than what shape our bodies are. I mean, somebody once said to me about, so how do you feel about your liver? I'm like, yeah, pretty good, yeah, the liver seems to be livering away quite well. I'm like, what do you think about your kidneys? They're like, yeah, they're good, my kidneys, I like them. They kidney away, doing whatever kidneys do. I mean, if we, if we look, if we imagined that we felt about the outside of our bodies, about how we might feel about our internal organs, that seems to me an, an interesting way of looking at things. Like, why would you have an opinion about your liver? What shape it is, what, if it's doing its livering thing, brilliant, well done, body, carry on. And yet we're just, we are completely obsessed by the external shell of our bodies, as if it really matters, and I, I don't really think it does. I think there's a lot more important things to think about in the world. But, having said all that, I think it's okay to have fun with your body as well. It can be the site of all kinds of pleasure, so... We're, I don't really think we've left the Victorian times. I think we're quite confused about it all, really. We want to think we're liberated and we can do whatever we want, and blah, blah, blah. But we're actually still a little bit hung up on it all, so... Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that we would move in the direction of Scandinavians' attitude towards bodies, which is much more just... Like naturism, you know, naturism in a certain place. Germans are really big into it as well. Just get your kit off and hang out on a beach or in the woods or whatever. Because it feels nice, not because it's a sexual thing. I think we, I don't know, we don't seem to be able to get our heads around that in our society. Mm -hmm. We, we sexualise everything. I mean, we sexualise children, just about every advert, TV programme, film you watch. I mean, it's like... And then we wonder why it's an issue in our society. It's, it's tricky. We're a bit messed up about it all. Mm. It's interesting you said about people wondering about the function of bodies and like the internal organ thing, because it's like the whole thing with the breastfeeding thing is that is their function, that is what they're primarily mm. for, but people are like, oh, it's obscene. Mm. In more shopping malls, I think, if a woman's doing it, they have these special screens that they just come and put up around her. Mm -hmm. That's weird. But that is for, which is strange, isn't it? Because, you know, talking about the male gaze and breasts in our society, I mean, that is one of the currencies that makes the whole media tick. And yet, a woman breastfeeding her child, we seem to have to screen that off to stop the male gaze because the male doesn't know what to do with that because that's like, oh, that's all got a bit complicated. I mean... All, a lot of this stuff comes down to education. We're not educated very well about... Like, we've only just realised that sex education in schools should be called sex and relationships education. So that, you know, it's not just about how to not get pregnant or get a disease. It's about how to negotiate your boundaries and work out what you might want and, you know... I mean, that's, that's in the last year. Mm. So, we're very slow to kind of appreciate the subtleties of what it is to be a human being, I think. So I don't know what the answer is, but it's not King Kardashian's bum. But then again, I sort of think, well, we're, you know, you, her, her doing that has created a dissertation for you. We're having this conversation now, which maybe is useful in some way, so... I kind of think the same thing about you, Kip. It's like something happens that instantly makes you kind of negotiate your own boundaries around what you think about it. And there's a place in the world for that on some level. I don't want everything to be the same and some big bland, of, bland pool of appropriateness and kind of, you know, you need, you need edges on things. You need people to take things a little bit too far sometimes so that everybody else goes, all right, we're not doing that. So, and then, you know, everybody has to raise the stakes, don't they? So Kim Kardashian's done her thing. So now it's going to be a year or two before somebody can do something like that. And then somebody else has got to come along and go, 
what can I do to break the internet? And what can I call it? I can't call it break the internet. I'm going to call it melt the web and, you know, do something slightly different for the same purpose. I mean, I honestly think most, most of the marketing, PR, media world is nonsense. It's nonsense. It's nonsense about nothing fluffed up to tell a story about nothing for somebody else to gossip about to somebody who hasn't got anything better to say to each other. Mm. It's like it was Miley Cyrus last or the year before, the VMAs and then... Yeah, Miley Cyrus thing was really interesting, wasn't it? Because, I mean, Sinead O'Connor, who probably doesn't mean anything to you... Yeah, I kind of so, heard about the... So Sinead O'Connor, I mean, is a, is a very kind of strong, self-proclaimed feminist... And so she wrote an open letter to Miley Cyrus after the wrecking ball thing, sort of saying, you know, this isn't what a young female role model should be doing with their position now. And then that turned into a whole thing. And then Shirley Manson from Garbage joined in, and it all turned into a. I mean, Shirley Manson and Sinead O'Connor come from the alternative field, their left field. Miley Cyrus is a Disney girl. You know, I mean, this is the trouble is that people mix up all this stuff like it's the same. and... Why, why would, you know, somebody who's come from the same route as Britney, brought up through the Disney mill, do anything other than commodify themselves in a commercial way? Why would she not do that? I mean, it worked, didn't it? Everybody's still not talking about that now, but that was the top of the wrecking ball thing, was the topic for ages, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just silly and not very good, mm -hmm. I don't think. And... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, Madonna and Gaga are kind of in a different category. You don't get many of those coming up who really do come across as strong, independent, artistic, intelligent women carving their own career on their own terms. I mean, that's really rare, isn't it, in the pop field? Mm -hmm. Not like they've got someone behind the scenes. Hey? Not like they've got someone behind the scenes, like, puppeting them. Yeah, the well, everybody's got so. people behind the scenes marketing them, but it, it feels like, it always felt like Gaga and Madonna have got their own thing going on, that they're kind of, they're driving it forward on their own terms. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, sex sells. I mean, it always, it always has and probably always will on some level. Mm. And that's all Kim Kardashian's doing, really, is just cashing in her chips while she can. Do you think our attention we give to it is based on like the need to distract ourselves from actual important things like I think it was GK GQ magazine the UK version there's a US version and a UK version the UK one voted gave Kim Kardashian award for woman of the year as opposed to all the other women who've done influential things and important things I know it's GQ magazine, but at the same time, it sort no, of... No, it's ridiculous, and it's very sad. I mean, look at Jeremy Bloody Clarkson thing that we've got going on at the moment, and, you know, there's, there's now kind of articles coming out about the, the petition to bring back Jeremy Clarkson to Top Gear has now gone over some ridiculous number of people, and then there's, there's now a thing that's gone viral about top ten campaigns that could change the world if as many people subscribes them as bring back Jeremy Clarkson to Top Gear and it's a list of you know clearly significant things on the planet and but that's the world that we've invented I mean you know when you get to a stage where more people are voting for Big Brother than they are for a political party in the general election people are campaigning more for Jeremy Clarkson than they are to stop female genital mutilation or something like that I mean it's clearly not right, is it? But, yes, it is a distraction. And it's not that there's necessarily anything wrong with having a distraction. We don't want to spend our entire lives worrying about worthy, heavy, serious things. There's nothing wrong with having a bit of fun, but it is important to remember what it is. It's a load of fluff and nonsense about nothing. Puffed up to, you know, stare at and gossip about it's, it's, the strange thing is you know you get Russell Brand John Lydon hardly anybody saying anything of any importance about the world that we live in or politics 
So why is it down to John Lydon and Russell Brand to, to have a voice? You know, if Kim Kardashian came out and actually had a voice about, right, well, we've all seen my bums, great, isn't it? But I just want to say something about my experience of being mixed race in America. And if she suddenly did that, that would be like, oh, good. Now she's built a platform and she's done something. But even if I didn't agree with her, I think that would be great to, to build that platform and then do something with it or... I don't know. We just seem to be in a trap, don't we, of... You either get serious, worthy, intelligent, intel intellectual, question time, news night world, or just shit about nothing to gossip about. It seems to be very much in the middle. Maybe that's your job, Jazz. You can yeah. make some fun but meaningful media in a few years' time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's it.